Hey guys, welcome back to the shop. This is the hydraulic reservoir I'm building for the tank project. It'll hold the oil for the hydraulic drive system. It's about 20 or so gallons. It'll Well, it's bigger than that, but it'll hold about 20 gallons of hydraulic fluid, maybe a little bit less depending on how much I actually need. I couldn't find any any other container to use as a hydraulic tank, and buying a hydraulic tank like that would a vest size would be like hundreds of dollars. So, and since I'm already spending a bunch of money on the other stuff for the tank, I figured I'd just um, fabricate my own hydraulic reservoir since it's not that big of a deal. So basically, when I was making this, the original design here was 30 inches by 15 inches tall, 12 inches wide. Um, that would give me a volume of about 20... 23 gallons and the surface area of about 1600 inches cute um, squared inches and then I changed the design to be 35 inches by 13 inches tall and 12 inches wide still about 23 gallons just a little bit more but I get a lot more surface area over 2000 square inches when the main purpose of the hydraulic reservoir is to dissipate the heat produced in the system from the ener from energy inefficiencies here and there throughout throughout the system and how you how the heat is dissipated is through the volume of the tank and the surface area of the tank so by increasing the surface area that increases the amount of heat that the tank is able to dissipate um, I'll just take take it over here to show you what it's like it's out of just some regular sheet metal. It's actually made out of like old metal shelving there. That's one that's that's kind of cut up. But it's working pretty good. It should be nice. The thin the thin walls will help the heat dissipate faster as well. Down here. So down there there's the outlet and then the inlet will be up there. The outlet going to the hydraulic pump will be one half inch NPT size and then that the inlet I'm um, expecting to be three quarters just for the fittings I have on the other just to match the fittings I have on the other um, parts I've gotten um, so far it's going pretty well you can see there's some holes in the corners and stuff that I'll have to address separately after I have this mostly finished this is the top piece here That'll go right on top, and I'll make an opening up there and such. So, how this is going to go in the actual tank is it will be over here to the left of the engine when you're looking at it from the back. This is the back of the tank right here. The hydraulic reservoir will be like right here. The pump will be in there, driven by the engine, which will draw fluid directly from the tank right here. Going up to the valves, with the valves will be up there. They'll do drive the motors and do everything they have to do. Then the it'll go back through a filter, hydraulic filter, and back into the tank over here. It'll work its way back up and then just repeat that cycle. Um, I'm thinking that should be. I, I don't see any problems with it right now. A uh, good thing is that. Because it's so long, that helps distribute the weight across the tank, which is good. It also, I've also made it so that the tank and the engine kind of balance out the weight so that the tank won't be leaning to one side, which is also good because you don't want to <laughs> lean into one side as you're going along. And so I've been at this pretty much all day now. I think. This is good for good for now. I've got all the all the walls made and just set up there. Tomorrow, what I'll be doing is probably um, doing a cup, doing a little bit more in here. I'll show you what I'm going to do inside of there to increase heat transfer as well, and then just really just weld it up and makes the fittings for in and out. And then make something mounted on that. That's pretty much all it is. It's it's just a tank. So, and it's not it's not pressurized either. So I don't have to worry about it 
having to take any type of pressure. And oh yeah, so that's that's it so far. All right, so it's day two of the hydraulic reservoir build. As you can see, everything is assembled. I fin I finished cutting out and sizing all the walls and everything. Got them all welded together. Drilled out the holes for the inlet and outlet. Uh, I've just tack welded the fittings on right now. I'll weld them on completely later. And really, all I have to do is just address a couple holes here and there. Weld those up. And what I did on the inside here is I welded two partitions there on the inside and those are called baffles and what they do is they disrupt the flow of hydraulic fluid through the tank because what you don't want on the tanks and on the hydraulic tanks and what can happen on smaller tanks especially ones smaller than this even is that there'll be a direct flow of fluid coming into the tank and out of the tank what this does is it makes it like a maze instead of the fluid coming in here and just going straight over there it has to come in here and th down here and back up here and go around like a like it has to go through a maze to get there and that delays the process and that allows for more transfer of heat it slows down the fluid and that's really what it does because it's important to get the heat transferred properly or else you'll overheat the system, which would not be good. So, that's pretty much it. I don't know, not a whole lot to say. Um, I don't, as you can see, I don't have the top welded on yet. That's the top over there. And I don't think I'll weld that on for a while, because it really doesn't have to be on there until I actually have to run this, which will be in a while. And if I have to change anything on the inside or something, I'll have access to it in there. So I guess now I'll take you over to the tank and show you how it's going to be set up on there. Alright, so this is where the, the reservoir is going to be on the tank. Just to the other side of the engine there. How this will work is the pump will be right in here, being driven by the engine, drawing fluid from right here. It will go up to these valves, which will be up there by the seat. The valves will go direct the fluid back to these motors, control the direction of the tracks front and backwards for each side and then once that's done it'll exit the valves and back into the reservoir over there go through the reservoir back out to the pump and repeat that cycle so it fits in there pretty nicely how I expected it to be really um, so the end of the driver's compartment of this thing will probably be like right about here, right at the back of where that seat is. So what I'll do is there'll be a wall right here and I'll like put a little so I can monitor the temperature of this I'll put a little like thermometer on here, one of those thermometers you can stick on things and they tell you the temperature of whatever they're stuck on and then I'll make a, like a little, little door in the wall so you can open up the door and then see what the temperature is to know if it's running properly and so it's coming along good I didn't really have any major problems with building this thing like you said last earlier it's just it's pretty simple just a box but I will have to be very careful to make sure every little hole is patched up because I can't have any leaks in this that would not be good at all and make sure it's spotless by the time I start running it there's some like stuff in here right now. I'll have to clean this out really well before I use it. Alright, so yeah, that's it for now. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time. And if you're just coming across this channel, this is one video in a longer series showing the construction of my 30% scale ISU-152, a Soviet World War II era tank destroyer. And if you enjoyed the video, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe for more videos about the tank and other cool stuff.